great folks welcome to my channel if you are new here i am going to put together a little bit of a, a tutorial somewhat in depth for beginners on how to program a urc complete control remote um, there's a bunch of remotes in the line um, so i'm just going to choose one model and uh, it's pretty much the same basics between all the different remotes the differences are mostly in how they look and in how you set up your interface and um, there's some advanced features uh, programming on some of the higher-end remotes that are not available on either some of the older remotes that are still available in the software or some of the lower-end ones um, I will choose uh, probably a I'll, I'll probably choose one of the um, the lower end of the higher end remotes if that makes sense basically the the first model in the lineup that gives you a little bit of the advanced programming um so without further ado let's begin so hopefully you have the complete control program already if not um you can download it there are some you have to it, currently you have to register with urc to get access to the software it'll give you a uh, some login information so if you have not done so um, and you're trying to program and you're finding that with the software that's updated you don't have access contact urc's uh, support staff and they should be able to set you up with a login info uh, this used to be only available to dealers um, they decided after some backlash that they will give at least for the time being login to end users as well so make sure you contact them about that. Um, so here we have the program open. When you start a new file, it's going to ask you the question here. And um, you can either choose a remote. These are all the different models of remotes that are available. Uh, I'm just going to do empty so you can see the screen that pops up. So here you can build your home. If you're doing multiple remotes in your system, it's best if you create different rooms and put your remotes within the different rooms. Um, you can rename these, but these are just some of the icons they give you to use. Uh, I'm just going to do a tutorial with just the basic one room. So that's fine. I'm just call home. You can, like I said, we can rename it, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an RF base for this tutorial. Um, the main ones you get now are the MRF 350 or the MRF 260. Uh, you know, this is an older model. You really don't use these anymore. Um, not within complete control. Uh, the MRX, the MRF 260 has a built-in antenna right on the base. Uh, in theory, it sounds nice. Everything's built in. The problem is your equipment can give off interference, which affects whether the commands that you program actually are received by your devices. Um, there's no real easy way to uh, navigate around that problem when you are dealing with the MRF, MRF 260. Um, for that reason, I'd spend a little bit extra, get the MRF 350. That has a separate antenna that's connected with a wire. It comes with two different wires you can use that have um, different connections on it. You can also, it has a little Molex plug on, on both the antenna and the, um, the base that you can use, Cat5, Cat6 cable, which, um, which is nice. You can use a shielded cable even if you want if you have to put it a bit farther away from where your equipment is. So if your equipment's, you know, on the opposite side of your house and you need to put the antenna closer to the room, you can run it on a category cable and then mount the antenna closer. Um, but it's nice because you can get that antenna away from where the interference is. And generally speaking, I'd recommend if you can put the antenna lower rather than higher, it's actually better. Interference seems to be better if it's mounted lower in most cases. So... Um, sometimes I have to put it in the bottom of a closet. If I can get it into a crawl space or basement, I'll often do that. Uh, that helps quite a bit as well. So we're going to select the MRF 350, add that to our project, and it pops up with this screen. So you can rename it here if you want to rename it to your room, whatever your room is. Oops, sorry, I have my caps on. You can name it to your room if you want, which helps if you do. If you if you are building a system with multiple rooms and you have multiples of these um of these uh, bases in there it's it's best if you if you name it um if you name it after uh, whatever room it's in it's just it's going to be a lot easier and you'll see later why so the rfid 
That is what we program into the remote is the ID that is set on the base station. On the bottom of the base station, there's a small dial that has basically all these different IDs on there. You want to set it to the same thing. So whatever you set here, just make sure you set that dial. Don't use zero. Zero is called sniffing mode, and that is to detect interference. So if you're not sure if you have an interference issue, set the dial on the bottom of the base to zero. And what's going to happen is if there's interference, the light, either the light that's on the front here, there's a power light, and then there's a signal light. The signal light will come on at different levels of brightness. It could be very faint if there's very little bit amount of interference. It could be just completely bright, full on. That means there's a lot of interference. What you want is it to not be on at all. Um, your emitters that we'll talk about that you put on the equipment, those also, if they are lighted emitters, which URCs are, they will light up if there's interference. So um, it's, it's, it is good practice when you're installing it to, to at least in temporarily put it on ID zero. You have to do it in the software, just on the base. And that'll tell you if there's interference. But once you have that done, set, set the base to whatever ID you program here so that basically your remote communicates only with that base. So the ports are, there's six ports on the back of the MRF 350. The MRF 260 has four ports. So you get two more on the 350. Uh, on those ports, we plug a little emitter in, which is basically a little, it's a little uh, bug that you put on the front of your devices. So when you send a command from your remote, it goes to the antenna, which is connected to the base, out through these little emitters that stick on the front of your equipment, and it sends the signal to, to the device through that little emitter. So you have to place those emitters very specifically on your equipment, some of which are very easy to tell where the eye is on the equipment. That's where you point. You would point the remote that comes with, say, your TV, your cable box, whatever the device is, where you would point your remote if it's IR controlled. Um, some of them are not that, that easy to tell where you can, you can take a flashlight and hold it to the front of your device. A lot of time you can see the eye through the plastic cable boxes are usually pretty easy. Some of them are not, um, it really dependent on the equipment. If you can't see it, you're going to have to go through all the pro, uh, sorry, programming steps. And then when you press buttons that should function your device, um, you, Basically, you have to move that emitter around until it does what you're pressing on the remote, and that'll that's where you would stick it on. So, um, it's, it's some sometimes it can be a pain, but usually it's pretty easy to find where the emitters are. And like I said, some some equipment is very obvious, and even some like Sony Blu-ray players they put a little label in there that says IR that gives you an idea of roughly where it is. So, what you want to do is you want to label your ports here for what you're going to. Um, what you're actually going to be um, putting your emitters on. So uh, we'll just start labeling them. Uh, what I typically do is I will label them according to basically how they're set up, meaning if the TV is the device that's the highest, which it usually always is, TV is number one. And then in your cabinet or closet, whatever the device that's in your stack on the top, that'll be number two. And then do three four um, and then sometimes there's, if they're side by side I'll put one off on the side but let's say we do a Roku um, it's pretty it's, it's it helps you if you keep them in some type of order um, just you have to keep track of where each emitter is plugged in to have everything operate properly so this helps um, we're not gonna have anything plugged into the six so that's it we can hit okay you can see it adds it to our, our program. It's in our room that's within the home. Um, can name this again family room if we want, but I'm just gonna leave it. So uh, I mentioned I'll probably use the kind of the the first level in the remotes that gives you some some more of the the um, more advanced program, which would be the MX890, which is a few years old now, but it's, it's still a pretty good remote. Um, the 798 and the 990 here, those are their newer newest remotes. The 790 is their newest. That's their basically the entry level. It's a good remote. But uh, we'll do the 890. So what this what this sc screen here basically is just saying is we're if you had if you had added multiple rooms with multiple bases, 
they would all show up here. So we want to make sure that the remote we're programming for this room, which is our family room, is using that base station. So that's what this is. It's our default base station. You can name the remote whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as, as the, the model name. Um, this is our theme. You can see when I choose another one, changes what the theme looks like. It's a couple built-in ones that you can actually build your own if you want. It's a bit tease. I'm not going to cover that in this video. So um, what I typically do is this is actually the cleanest one, I think, for what's built into this particular remote. So you just choose a theme to use and click OK. Adds it to your, to your program, and that's all we have to do on this screen. So we're going to close that out. And now it pops up with our window here, which is pretty nice that it shows us basically the layout. Obviously, on the remote, this screen is on top up here, but this allows you to see everything nice and easy. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to go across here to kind of go through our functions. This configure home designer, that's basically where we just were to add everything. So if you need to get back in there, uh, you know, if you if you need to get in and change where your ports are labeled or anything or change your ID, you just come in that configure home designer here and double double click on your base station to get you back here. So here we're going to hit create name devices. And this gives us our screen with a few options here. We can name our pages. This stuff, I don't worry too much about. Here's really what you're going to pay attention to is your, your options in here. You can see they change through activities. Blanks just gives you some basic um, icons. You can rename all this stuff. What I use, you have rooms. What I use mostly is brands and devices. So the difference depends on what you're searching for. Brand, so let's say we're going to add cable. So here where I am, Cablevision is um, it's one of the main cable companies. So we're going to drag that over, just add it. That's it. Um, so let's say we were doing a Blu-ray player. Let's see if I go to, say, do a Sony, which is you know pop, uh, probably one of the most popular Blu-ray players. You don't, have it, you don't use them that much anymore, but you may have one. Um, if we add that, it just says Sony. It doesn't say Blu-ray. So that's the difference. Now if we go from brands to just devices, now we have ones that are actually labeled Blu-ray. The image is a Blu-ray. We can add that. Um, I'll show you later how you can get rid of where it overlays this labeling here. Um, you don't want to delete it here because if you delete it here, it's not going to show in our in our tree here as Blu-ray, which we want it to, to show as. So we want to basically hide that later on. So just leave that as is. You can rename it whatever you want to make it easier um, so you know what it is. But in this case, Blu-ray is obviously pretty self-explanatory, although they hyphen it, which is not usually hyphenated. But, um, so I guess we'll add another device, which if we go to Brands again, so you see you can kind of switch between them. I said we'd add a Roku, so that was in there. Oops. Helps if I pay attention to what I'm doing. Here's our Roku. You can see for some reason that doesn't add it overlay. It's already hidden. So that's what I'm going to add to our first page. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the second page. And this is where I'm going to add our TV and our AV receiver. So... Here we can just add AV receiver. And we'll just go all the way down. And there's TV. So that's it for our devices that we're adding for the system that at least I have set up for this tutorial that has all devices that we'll use. So we're going to go to layouts. It's going to ask us to save, or you can click save down here first if you want. Now what we have to do is choose uh, the pages that get added for each device, meaning, you see when I add this, they actually have the pages with the buttons. By default, they don't have anything there. So we used Apex. The difference between all these different ones are just the colors of the buttons. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use different colors. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. Um, you know, you can do Aqua for cable if you want to do another color for Blu-ray and then go and do maybe Royal for Roku since it's close. It's perfectly fine. It, it may help you determine which page you're on just at a quick glance. Um, doesn't really matter. It's, it's just up to you. It's, if you're OCD about having everything the exact same, then you can do the same 
color buttons. So what we do is we have cable, so we're just going to go to cable TV. All you do is add pages. It's going to add all your pages. We all basically uh, it's it's going to add automatically buttons to your interface. Not necessarily these; they look different. Um, some of which you don't use. Some are hidden. And we'll see when we get farther in the software. Um, but what you do is just go through each device. We're going to go to DVD for Blu-ray. Add pages. Roku. We're just going to do auxiliary. That's what it's under. There's nothing really else there that you would use for that. Add pages. For the receiver, we do audio. Add pages. TV, we can go down to TV. Add pages. And you're done with that. So you can go to next, which brings us to the next tab up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually select the commands, the, the codes that each device uses. So right now it doesn't know what brand we're using, what model we're using. So what we do is we go into our list here. So you have your device. We, this is all the devices that we added to our project. This is the um, type of device that obviously we want to use for whatever we have highlighted here. And then go to the brand that you have. So we'll do Sony. Again, very popular brand. A lot of these models use codes that are the exact same. And you can see there's a code set here that basically tells you that these are using either different or same codes. You can see a lot of them are using the same ones. Let's go down to XBR because they're popular. And a lot of them use, again, same commands that, that uh, even if it's a different code set, sometimes they're the same commands. Um, and when you're going through your list of your devices, uh, you don't always need the exact same model number that you have. If they have it, a lot of time it's best to use it, but um, it's not always necessary. And sometimes it's not, it's even not, not the best case to use the model you have. And the reason being, we want to use as much as possible discrete commands. So if you look up here, we have power on and power off. The... Um, these are discrete commands, meaning if you send power on, it's only going to turn this TV on. It's not going to turn it off or do anything else. All it'll do is turn it on. If you, if you select the power off, same thing. It's only going to turn it off. It won't turn it on. Um, they also have a, a toggle command here, which toggle command is what most of the remotes out there that come with your equipment have. So if you think of your TV button, the TV remote, it has a power button. If you press it, it turns it on. You press the same button again, it turns it off. So it does multiple things. Um, for programming a remote like this, you really want to use the discrete commands. The, the separate power on, separate power off. Same for um, your input commands. Sometimes even more important, having discrete commands like this. So if you buy a, a cheaper, you know, lower end TV, it may not have these discrete commands and it's going to make programming a lot more difficult for you. So, you know, hopefully the TV that you buy does have discrete commands. There are ways around a lot of this stuff and sometimes it gets a bit more tedious to program. Um, but you know, if just, if, if you can, if you check beforehand, if you, if you're going to go buy new equipment and you plan on using one of these remotes and you want it to work as best as you can, it may, it, you know, it may behoove you to go and check these commands and see if they have discrete commands. So we're going to, we're going to choose this TV, the Sony TV. I don't, this is just a demo. So I know that this, this codes work on a, a whole lot of, of Sony TVs over the last several years. So even more than that. So, uh, so we hit save all, it adds our commands and then you just go to the next device. So we go to Blu-ray. So here we're going to select Blu-ray DVD. Again, I'm going to do a Sony on this one just because they're so popular. Um, Sony, Blu-ray, some of them will have discrete. You can see. Some of them don't. Um, I'll choose this one just because it has the discrete power on and off. Um, there's there's a couple ways that you can program a Blu-ray. If they A lot of them don't have discrete power commands. A lot of time you can send a play command and it'll uh, it'll turn it on. Sometimes Some of them... You have to send an eject command, which opens the tray, which is kind of a pain. Um, but again, if you have something that has the discrete commands, that's always best. Hit save all. It's telling us there were 44 commands it added to our... Basically, it's it's mapping these commands to the buttons that are on the remote that we that we 
basically added in the layout stage in the previous step. So Roku, Apple TVs, those are here under streaming. So if you, whichever one you use, um, there's, most of these commands work on all the Rokus. They're pretty similar. Um, so you can select, you can see this has a lot of built-in um, commands to, to jump right to services. And I don't know if they all have that. Yeah, I guess they maybe updated it, so they do have that. So our AV receiver. Again, AV receivers, again, it's important to, to find something that has discrete commands. I'm just using Yamaha just because it's one that we use quite a bit. It's waiting for it to populate here. So you can scroll through a bunch. I'm kind of familiar with models. So these RXA is a lot of the ones we use. These A RXA 8A and 6A, these are their brand new models. Uh, a lot of their commands work on those as well as the previous gen. So these, all these like 800. So these change every year on, on Yamaha. 800 is quite old, 810, 820. Each year they up this a number. So you can see how many years they have. I'll just choose one of this. I'll choose the 880. So you want to choose the main one that has basically the commands we're going to use for programming this. Save all. And again, our TV, it shows in there. So that's all of our devices. We're going to go to punch through. Punch through makes things quite easy for you um, in, in that it, what it does is it takes wherever we, whatever we select here, you can press control to select multiples. So whatever we select here, it maps the buttons that are labeled here to whichever device we select here. So what this says is the main page, the cable, the Blu-ray, and the Roku. If you press the volume up, volume down, or mute button on any of these pages, it's going to send those commands to the AV receiver, which is what we want. Um, what I also typically do, and this is dependent, I guess, on who programs, they all have different methods of doing this. Um, I unselect the main page. So I just have my sources here that I'm going to use. And I, and I will map my power buttons. So those are the buttons on the top, the, the, the green on and the red off, to the main page. So when I'm in cable, Blu-ray, or Roku, when I press, basically it's for when I press the off, it maps it to the main page off button. So I don't have to program the off in each of these devices separately. So if I need to make a change, I only have to make it once. I don't have to make it three or actually four times here. I really don't have it on these devices. And you know, once we're going to hide those pages that these reside on. So you'll see. Um, and something that some people do, uh, you can click on the main. If you want to say map buttons to cable it as an example, we can do this. This says now that on the main page, these channel up and down, all these, which are your, oops, your navigation buttons, you have your play stop, pause all these buttons, and then lastly the number buttons, those are all mapped according to this if we if we program it like this to cable. So that means when you pick up the remote, let's say you accidentally get back to this main page, it's still going to function for your cable. I usually don't do that just because you, the, the remote is obviously programmed for separate devices. So I like to have it so that you have to be within one of these um, device activities here to control that device. But you can, however you like it, you can do that. Um, so that's what those would do. You can just basically map any of these um, control buttons to the main page. So what you have to do uh, once we're done with that, that's actually it. We already showed you everything. Oops, sorry, we're going to go to RF. So what this does now, the RF base that we added already, it's already set up. We need to tell the equipment to use that, to use that RF base because the remote itself can send signal directly out of the remote to your equipment or which is IR. Or if we have RF, it goes through the base station where the remote, uh, as I said earlier, it, it sends a signal to the antenna which then travels to the base and then spits out those codes through the emitters that are plugged in that you stick on the front of your equipment. 
So what you do here, you can actually set it to R IR, RF, or you can do both. I don't usually recommend doing both. Um, what can happen is if your device sees signal coming in from the emitter through the RF, as well as directly from the remote with IR, it can either cancel each other out, basically to double command, and then your device does nothing, or it can do some wonky things, or sometimes it simply gets the code twice. So um, most of the time I suggest using one or the other. RF is more reliable because if you point, if you're using IR and you point your remote at your system, you press, you know, the on button or cable, whichever source you select, uh, it's going to send out a series of commands. If you don't keep that remote pointed forward dur during the um, duration of those codes being sent, something may get missed. He, something may not turn on, an input may not get set, and then things don't work right. Um, usually pretty easy to fix that, but if you use RF, as long as you don't have interference and you did some of the checking I, I mentioned earlier so you don't have interference, when you send your commands through RF, the device has always received those commands. So it does what it's supposed to every time. So I would set them to RF. If you have your file, if you build your file with multiple rooms, it may have more than one listed here. You just want to make sure that you have it programmed for the correct receiver. We only have one here, so that's all it shows. And then what you really want to do to make sure everything does work best is you want to assign the ports to what we labeled earlier. So we know that we ran a wire to the cable box for our emitter. It's stuck an emitter on the front. That's plugged into port two. This was plugged into port three. So you just want to go and assign them all to whatever we've labeled and ran our emitters to. Um, this can this this becomes even more important if you build a system with multiple devices. Um, Generally, that happens if you either have a system that um, has a audio video matrix or something where it's controlling multiple rooms. Usually, you wouldn't use, I mean, you could use a product like this, but usually you go to more advanced products. Um, or, you know, uh, you have a little sports room at home, a sports bar. If you, let's say you're, you're watching this because you're, you're setting one of these up for a sports bar you have or a restaurant. If you have multiples of the same exact device, if you have two or three cable boxes or two or three direct TV boxes that are, you know, the same exact box. They use the same commands. If you used IR or you had this set to IR or you just had them set to all, meaning it sends the signal to all emitters, all ports at the same time. When you change channel on one box, they would all change. If you set your ports, when you change this box, it's only going to send it to port two. So if you had another cable box on port three, it wouldn't send a command to that and that box wouldn't change channels so um, beyond just it, it working better having everything set properly like this um, it really helps you if you build a system that has multiple devices uh, that are the same so that's all you have to do here we're not going to download right now we're just going to hit save and close that so now our remote is set up um, with all our devices everything's kind of where we want to put them so what I typically would do now, if you want to, if you want to rename or relabel anything, um, I'm going to show you. We have multiple pages here, so usually we start with one of these pages. It really depends. Actually, it's did not our commands. I don't know if I. We're going to go back to our database. Yeah, I forgot to do a cable. So let me just do that quick. Sorry about this, uh, going back here. I, for cable, a lot of, there's a lot of companies that use a ver various different boxes. And a lot of those boxes use the scientific Atlanta command, not all of them. So you may have to be careful, but where you're programming, um, where you're programming, you know, a, a, a Sony TV, usually you go to Sony. I, uh, again, Roku, you go to Roku with cable. You don't always go to that cable provider. Sometimes you can, and the, they'll actually be in there. You can see time Warner stuff like that. Um, but the scientific Atlanta 8,300 is one of the more popular ones to use. 
Um, a lot of cable companies use those commands that has DVR functions in it. So it's a good box to use, um, or at least try if you're not sure. Um, so you see, they just have their own listed. I don't, I don't really see Time Warner where I am, so I'm not sure how they use theirs. Xfinity is one I don't really see either. Um, I know they have these separate IR and RF. I believe if you use an RF base, the code's a little, the way it handles the codes, they want you to use the RF here. It's not direct. Don't quote me on that. Uh, like I said, I don't have Xfinity here, so you may have to try both of these codes to see which code set works if you're using a base station with them. But for us, we're going to use Scientific Atlanta. We did the 8300. And uh, just making sure we didn't skip any others. Sorry, computer just froze there for a second. All right, so now you'll see when I go here, now we have our commands where before it just said button. That's how I could tell that they weren't, I didn't actually save the, um, the codes in there for cable. All right, so there's a couple different ways you can, re, you can reorganize the um, everything that shows here. So if you go to view, you see functions, lists, or commands. So if you look, if you go back to simulate, settings, power, page up, page down, they're gonna be in here, but look how hard it is to see them. So if you're not really used to using the software, you may not like using this method. These you just basically, you just drag and drop to where you want them and it, it changes the, the layout. So and then you would go back if you looked, if you know where they were, things change where they were. Um, another way you can do it, which I find that if you're new to the software, it may be a little bit easier for you. So if we go to the IR Navigator. If you don't see it over here already, you have images, IR Navigator. Um, that's fine. If you go to tools, you'll see them here. IR, Na IR database navigator. Here's our image gallery. If you're not using really these with this remote. This you could, but we're not going to. That's more advanced. So IR database navigator. This shows us, again, a list of all those devices. It's kind of the same menu that we looked at um, when adding the devices the in the data, the data um, portion of the software. So... Let's say we're in cable. We're going to select cable. We're going to go and select the exact same model that we have. You don't have to. You can actually mix and match some commands uh, if you need to. But we're just going to go to our 8300. So here's all the commands. So a lot of people find it easier. Let's say you wanted to change what shows here. Let's go to another page. Just Let's say this one's easy. Day up and day down. That's usually for the guide. If you want to change what shows in your guide. Um, so if you look in here, you have day updates. So let's say we want to change it to page up and page down. You can just drag and drop. Basically add whatever you want. You know, picture in picture. Most of the boxes don't even have it anymore. If you don't want the help, which you don't need, you can you can do whatever you want. Um, so I would recommend at this point going through your different devices and changing the layouts now to however you want to show on the remote before we get into programming and telling the, the remote how to do what we want um, in terms of controlling the system when it turns on and off. Um, I'll explain why kind of towards the end why you would do that. It'll make more sense once I have um, built the, the file up here. So what we want to do now, we've already got Assuming you already went and changed your layouts and everything, everything looks the way you want it to. What we want to do now is tell the remote, what's it going to do when you press this button? Or what's it going to do when you press this button? And what's it going to do when you press this button? So this is our macro window here. And the macro is a series of commands that are sent when you press that button. So to start it, you press the little red record button and you can see it's flashing. Now we can start sending our commands. So what you want to do, you may have to search through and look where everything is. For now, we're sending power. This makes it pretty easy. They put power right there. And you'll see power on, power off. 
if it uses a toggle command, your device, both of these where you see it says on the little kind of hover thing that comes on, it says power on, power off. It'll just say power, so you'll know pretty much it's a toggle. So here, we're going to add our TV on. And we're going to go to our AV receiver, same thing, TV on. Here it kind of runs off, so it's you'll see when I add it here, it says power on. It's just the name was long, so it kind of pushed it off here. So we have that on. Um, there's a couple different ways to turn the cable box on if you don't have discrete power. Most cable boxes do not have discrete power. Um, satellite usually is a little better about that, but uh, most cable boxes do not have discrete power. They have a toggle. So um, some cable boxes will have what's called power and numeric. You have to usually turn that on in the menu for your cable box. You may have to search for it. And what that means is when you when you send any one of these number commands, it turns the box on. Uh, usually, if you send a number, one of these numbers, it's going to skip. It's going to change to that station. So, what I would do if you're doing cable, we're going to make sure we select cable first. I usually send if I'm, if the box has this ability, I send the zero command because it doesn't change channels. It turns it on, but it doesn't change the channel. And then I'll send a quick exit command. So that means that it changes, it uh, turns the box on. Usually if the TV's already on, you're going to see the zero. But if you send an exit command, you usually don't even see it because it happens so quick. Um, but I do put a, a, a quick delay in there just so, just a 0.1 second delay. We're going to add delays throughout the whole macro here soon. So you'll see that as well. So here we have everything's turning on. Now we have to tell what inputs we're going to change to. So when we go to our TV, you, again, you may have to scroll through them to look for them, to look for the input that you use. They're not always in order. If you didn't rearrange them, then they could be scattered a bit. So we're just going to use HDMI 1 for our TV, which is common. For a receiver, uh, we usually use the same inputs. That you, it, it, it's best if when you start all this, write down your model numbers of everything and write down the inputs everything's plugged into. You may have to turn things on if it's already been installed for a while and tune your inputs just to, to see what everything is if you don't remember. Uh, most receivers, at least for years, use the same um, inputs. They were labeled on the back somewhat the same across a lot of the different brands for um, for cable, Blu-ray. So usually cable is, was the HDMI 2 input. So that's what we're going to put. Assume that that's what we used in our mock-up system here. And we can move our jump to the bottom. So what we want to do is add our delay. So this little time clock, the delay, you can do 0.1 or 0.2 seconds, something, something that's pretty short. And you can press Control C if you want to copy it, and then just Control V to paste. Just paste one between each command. Now, there's a thing called power on delay. What that is, and what that means, is when you turn on your TV or your receiver, there may be a period of time, I mean, there is a period of time, until it will accept uh, an input command or any command. Um, the equipment's gotten better, so if you have newer equipment, it may not have, um, it may not have a very long power on delay to, to the point where it may not even be noticeable. Um, if your equipment's a little bit older, it probably has a delay where you're going to want to account for that in here. So here we have it turning everything on. And this is where we start adding um, commands to change input. So you can double click that one. And we'll put a three second power on delay. That There's no way to know really what you need in your system. You're going to have to basically just test. Um, if you have older equipment, I, Mitsubishi is an example years ago. I know they had, we had systems that had a 15 second power on delay, which means you press the on button and you had to wait 15 seconds before you could send these commands. So um, it, it, was, it was kind of annoying because it would take a while. Um, there's, there's through some advanced programming we can do that will allow you to speed that, that delay up once the system's already on. Meaning if you, if you programmed a 15 second delay right here where we have this three seconds right now and we just left it like this, and you turned on your system to cable, and then we had the same delay in each each of our sources. 
when you change to Blu-ray or to Roku, you'd have to wait that 15 seconds every time. So there's some programming we can do that once the system's on, it knows it's on, and you have basically no delay there at all. So I'm um, not really going to cover that in this video, but if you're interested in that, um, you can just leave a, a comment below and we can we can go over that. And um, it's, it's relatively easy. It takes a little bit to grasp what you're doing, but um, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, and then what I usually do, I don't have any custom graphics on this computer. Um, if you go and you, you click your, this is your jump to icon here. And this basically is, is telling the remote to jump to another page. Um, some of the remotes have built in um, please wait screens that you can jump to. This one doesn't. So what I typically do, it's got to turn off my recordings, make sure you're not still recording here. So I go to my main page, I right click, and I add a new page, page three. So I rename that please wait. So we double click that, it's just a blank page. So if I go to my image gallery, normally on my, my regular programming computer where I have custom graphics, I have some in there for a please wait page. I don't have that here. So it would show my custom buttons here. Um, we can go over again in a later video if you're interested on how to create those. But here I just do a large, just do a blank, just do a blank button. You can pick whatever color you want. You can just drag them over. So here it's going to kind of lock in place, but you can move it around somewhat. You can use your your keys to kind of center it more because it's going to jump. Over. It's going to lock into place um, as is. So make a blank button. It just labels the color here, and there's different ones you can use. Um, but what we can do, properties allows us to change what's on here. So again, if your properties don't show, if you hit view, you can see you have different options here. You just click properties, and it'll pop up over here. So we've got this highlighted. You can change what this says to please wait. We can center it if we like. Move it around a bit. You can change the size of it. Whatever you like to do. Simple as that. If you if you drag over a custom graphic, it's, you don't have to go through this step, but basically the same as just centering it. That's all you have to do. So. If we go back to our main screen, we're going to go here. So we're if we're at this step where we were recording our macro, click on my jump to, go to my main page. This is where it is under our main pages. Please wait. And that adds it right there. So now what this macro is, is telling us, when you press this button, it's going to, first it's going to jump from this screen over to this screen it's just going to stay there while it's on that screen it's going to send the tv power on the av receiver power on it's going to send the zero command for a cable box and then exit to turn that on and it's going to wait three seconds then it's going to send a command for the hdmi one on the tv and then it's going to send the command for hdmi two on the receiver and then it's going to jump to our cable page and that's what that does so it's fairly easy. Uh, there's there's a, another way to program the power on for cable. I'll program these devices first, and then we'll come back and we'll show you another way to do that. Um, to program these, you can copy and paste all this, which actually we'll do for another reason. So if you if you click on the first one and then shift, click on the last one, you can then hit Control C to copy. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this button up here, our on button, and I'm going to do control V. So I copy that same programming to here. And the reason I do that is because most systems that have a cable box or a, or a, a satellite box, that's going to be your default that you're going to use. Um, not every, not everybody obviously uses cable boxes anymore. So it may not be in your house. You may be using a Roku or Apple TV as your main. Whatever you typically watch as your main, I usually will copy that uh, that macro up here. So these two do the same thing. What makes it easy for guests, so if you have a babysitter or your in-laws come over, 
typically if they're going to use the system, they're just going to go and watch cable or satellite. That's what most people watch when they're if, if they're visiting in that case. So if you hand them this remote, most of the time they're just going to press the green button anyway, but you can even tell them green for go, red for stop. Red is what we're going to program to turn it off. So it's very easy. When they hit this, it's going to jump to our cable page and they're going to be able to control their cable box. They're going to have channels up and down, your numbers, your volume, which we punched through to the receiver. It's all going to work so they don't have to do much to, to use it. So it's pretty easy. Um, so same thing. You can program the Roku on there if you want and it'll jump to the Roku and they just have to select what they're watching. Um, so for, for if, if you want, you can come here and also paste your macro here. Um, you have to make sure that you delete the correct commands and enter the correct commands if you do that. So if you're a beginner, it's probably best just to go through and program everything separately. It's just going to be easier to kind of grasp, at least while you're building your, your file at first. So here we're going to do our power on for TV again. Receiver, power on. Our Blu-ray player, power on. If your Blu-ray has toggle command, you can usually send a play command or sometimes even eject command, which I don't, using, I don't like using eject just because it opens the drawer, which especially if it's in a cabinet, it may hit against the door. Um, so it's great if you do have a discrete command instead of a toggle for your Blu-ray player. But we had, we added our, our on commands for, for this macro. So now you got to go like we did before we go to our TV. We're going to use HDMI one because if you're using a, a audio video receiver, typically you're going to be using one input on the TV for everything. And then your audio video receiver routes everything to the correct, um, for the correct device. So here, where are we? Did I miss it? HDMI 1. So most AV receivers, uh, they label their HDMI 1 for Blu-ray. It's just the way most brands are. So that's where we put that, that command. And then, again, we can move this and put our jump to our please wait page. And then lastly, let's add some delays. So 0.1 or 0.2 seconds is usually fine for the delay between commands. Oops, sorry. Copy. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it between everything. And then we're gonna go back and just account for our power on delay. So once you get past your last power on device, sometimes you can do it up here because this doesn't have a power on delay. So even if you wanna do it here, it's fine. Um, but if you put it before that, it's just going to take longer until that device is ready. So we'll put our three seconds. And again, you may have to play with your, your system to see what that device could be. It could be five or six seconds. It could be, you know, less, who knows? And then lastly, we're going to do our Roku. So TV on, AV receiver on. Roku's don't have power. Um, power commands, it's just, it's always on. So you don't really have to send anything for that. It'll be awake already. Um, if you have an Apple TV, they, they send a menu command to wake it up. But what I highly recommend is go into the menu and look for your sleep settings and send it, set it to never. Um, Apple TV can be problematic and not wake up when you want it to. And, um, if you set it to never sleep, it's always going to be on. It doesn't really use any more power, so you don't have to worry about more consumption. Um, it's just going to work a whole lot more reliably for you if you do that with an Apple TV. So now that we have that, since there's no other devices to turn on, we can go to our TV, set it to HDMI 1, and the receiver, we're going to say we set it to HDMI 3. So we can move our jump. We're going to add our please wait. Oops, put that at the top. And then we're just going to add our delays. Copy, we're going to paste to each spot. And then lastly, after our last device we turn on, we're just going to change our power on delay. And there we go. So we can stop that. Now everything here is programmed to change, to turn on the system and change input. So 
you don't have to press your on button. If you pick up this remote, everything's off. Any one of these three buttons or the on button will turn the system on and go to that device with this on button going to whichever one you, whichever macro you copied up here. So again, we did cable, so that's what it'll turn on. So off, simply have to turn our sources off. So any source that has a discrete, we're gonna do that. TV's off, receiver's off. Our Blu-ray player does have a discrete off in this case. We're gonna send that. And um, cable, again, if we're using the power and numeric method, we would send zero and then a power. If it's a power toggle, both of these are the same. So again, it doesn't matter which. You can see right there, it just says power. And then what you want to do, you can do this at the beginning. Is, oops, we are going to do that, but um, to jump to, you want to make sure you jump your your off command, your I'm sorry, your off button, off macro, jump it to the main page. And the reason being is because we did our punch throughs, it means this button, both of these buttons do whatever's on the main page. So if we hit off here without jumping to the main page in that macro we just set, it's just gonna sit here on this page and not change. So what we wanna do is when we hit that, we want to jump back so when you pick up the remote, it's on this screen right here, ready to turn on to whichever source you press. So make sure you put that jump to the main page, whatever this page is. In our case, it's main page one up here. So again, we're gonna add some delays. I'm just gonna do a 1.1, it's fine. You can even put it above it. It actually sometimes is good to have it first. So there's no worry about a delay on the power off. And I usually don't put a please wait for the power off either, especially with when you have RF. If you had IR, you might want to, to make sure that somebody keeps it pointing forward. Um, but when you use an RF base, if they press off, they can put the remote down. It could take 20 seconds and it wouldn't matter. It would turn everything off. So uh, that's basically uh, how we set the off command. So for cable, I said there's a couple different ways to do the power. So we can do, uh, what's a, a bit more of an advanced uh, method, which is using variables. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these commands that we already programmed for cable. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And we're going to create a variable. So this if is an if else, it's called an if else statement. We're going to double click it, click on variable, and we're going to add a new a new variable. We're just going to call it cable power. And we're going to select false. So what what a variable is is it allows us to program two sets of commands on the same button press. A true state and a false state. So there's other there's integers you can do string variables. There's other ways to do it. Um, but we're just going to do a regular a regular um, true false statement because it's the easiest typically to grasp if you're a beginner. So it's best to start with these. And what I do is I always program. So false is my off state. On would be true. So true is an on state. Um, so you'll see here it labeled it as cable power false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy again, hold shift and select the first and the last one. I'm going to actually do Control X to cut it. Now I'm going to paste it in to my if and my else statement. So you'll see there's right under if and right under else. So this is saying if the system is off, meaning if cable is off, we know cable's off, run these commands. So what's missing here now is power. So now we can just set a regular cable toggle because this is saying if it's off run all these commands so turn the tv on turn the receiver on turn cable on and then set the hdmi inputs for each device else this means so if the system's already on turn on tv turn on the receiver we don't need to turn the cable box on because this is assuming now through our programming that the box is on 
So we don't need cable there. And then it sends the input commands. So that looks great. The only thing we have to do now is go to this button, which is to set the state of the variable on this button press. So we go to cable, we're gonna select true. So now, whichever, whichever option you choose here, it's gonna basically set it to true, meaning the box is on. So if the box was off, we're turning it on. If the box was already on down here, it stays on. So we're programming this variable to true. So now when you press this button, when you press this button, it runs through these and then it's telling the systems, telling the remote, okay, the cable box is definitely now on. So what I'm gonna do now, just because we programmed this command up here, we're gonna copy this all, the whole thing, copy. I'm just gonna select all this and, oops, just delete it. I'm just gonna paste that. So basically now we have the same programming once again on both of these screens. So the only other step to make sure that this works properly is we have to go to our off macro, which is again, why it's great to just use the punch through. So if I didn't do that, I'd have to go and do this on each one of these devices on the off button. So we're gonna go here. All, all we're gonna do, whoop, go down there. We're gonna do our if else statement. Again, variable, and we're gonna choose the one that we already selected. I'm gonna, again, I usually always use my if else is on false first. It's just, it keeps it uniform. We're gonna select, same as we did before, everything. We're going to control X to cut it. And we're gonna paste it, control V under if and else. So everything is just as we programmed it before. So now, if cable power is off, so if the cable box was off, meaning if we came in and watched Roku, only Roku, it never turned the cable box on because we never sent that command. So this is basically stating if that cable box was off, run through these commands. So, oops, we have cable here. So we have to remove that because we don't want it to turn the cable box off now. Else, so this is assuming if the box was on, because we're on the else side of this false statement. So this is basically the true statement down here. It runs through the same commands. We don't really need this zero anymore, so you can leave it, but, so it's gonna run through all these commands and now it's gonna turn cable off because the box, according to this, was already on. So this is if we had used the on statement. So now we just need to set this statement to false because whichever one you choose now is basically telling the remote that our box is turned off. If it was already on, I'm sorry, if it was already off, according to this state, it's not sending a command, the box is gonna stay off. If it was on, according to this side of the statement, it's gonna send our power command right here and turn the box off. So now it's false. So now when you press this or this, either one, through our statement, it knows if the box was already off, turn it on. If it was already on, don't do anything. And when you turn it off here, right here, if it was already off, stay off. If it was on, turn off and it tells it it's off. So that's a little bit more of the advanced program. It's very, very intro to the advanced programming. Um, they have a, a true false um, on a true false statement variable on some of the lower end remotes below this, including some of the old ones like the MX900, the MX780. Um, so you could still do this programming. Programming it looks a little different, and in some cases it's easier to grasp the way they lay it out on those remotes. They do them on separate screens, um, but it's the same programming. So this is a great way if you don't have discrete commands to track stuff. So what I'll typically do if I do this for cable box is I do come into the cable and I'll have this set up before when I, I said to set all your set all your pages up. And I can just pick one of these. I can unhide this remote just as an example. So I can go to my properties relabel this and I'll just label it 
cable fix instead of power. And basically what we're setting this to do is we're gonna go program it. We're gonna send a cable power. And I'm just gonna send it, I'm gonna set the variable to true. So all this states is if for some, for some reason, our variables get out of out of whack. And the only reason that usually would happen is if the system's already on and your battery dies on the remote or the remote thinks everything's on and the power goes out and everything's just kind of out of whack from that. If the if you turn the system on and the box doesn't go on, but when you turn the system off, the box is going on, it's out of it's out of whack. What you want to do is turn your whole system off and then physically turn the box off. But if you don't want to get up, when you turn the system on, just press our our button we just made. Where I put it? If you press this, it's going to turn the box on and now it's telling the system it's true. So now it knows the box is on once again. True meaning again, on. So it's a good idea to put one of these fix buttons in if you use that method. You can still fix it, like I said, by making sure everything's off and then just go turning the box off and then kind of resets everything. Makes it the easiest way to do it. Um, so that's a little bit of the advanced program we're going to do, to do today. So now what we have to do is just a few tweaks. So I said we can get rid of this Blu-ray. So if we go to our properties again, or on that Blu-ray button, you can see display text. We can just uncheck that. Um, you can also, you can change this to other things. You can do date. Normal is nothing on the main page. But if we go into cable, you see it says additional controls. You can change that to date, time, or page. A lot of time page is nice. You know which page you're on. So when you scroll through the different pages, that'll change to however many pages you have. And then I know uh, Blu-ray, they usually, yeah, they name this DVD. So if you want to relabel that, you can relabel that here. Just highlight it here, relabel that. And if you want to say Blu-ray, Roku is another one. I know that they don't label correctly. So auxiliary, you don't want to say auxiliary up there. You want to say what the device is. So you can say Roku. And again, you can go here and change it to say page number, whatever you want. Um, and one thing we showed you here, so this, you can see that the button text is a little too big, so you can go here and change that. Or if you want, you just get rid of menu. Let's say you know it's your settings if you want to have it the same size. Um, you know, if, you're, if your cable box refers to your DVR as DVR and not not um, list some some cable systems label it one some label it another you can change all that so that's a great way you can change everything so it's uh, more or less the gist of how you would program the remote um, one other thing I would say is additional pages that you don't need you can go over here and right click and hide them um, you know I just hid that fix button that I put there. So let's say we want to leave that. I would unhide that. But I'd have these I'd have these set up before I ever got to the programming state. And the reason that I say to set up the layout before we do all this programming, um, <clears throat> the reason being if you use this screen to move your your commands around. So let's say we were on um, the TV. <coughs> Excuse me. If we want to move, say, HDMI 2 and HDMI 3, the programming will follow that. So if we, it, it won't matter where the position is. So our programming that we did here won't matter. So our HDMI 1, if we change, like I just flipped that, if we change HDMI 1 to HDMI 4, this is going to still stay, H, stay as HDMI 1. However, if you go here, you go to TV. Let's go to uh, let's go to our Sony. Let's pick one of the XBRs, even though it doesn't matter which. So we go to HDMI. Okay, so let's say we go. <coughs> let's 
So here's HDMI 4. If we change that to HDMI 4 instead of 1, watch what happens. Now it changed our TV to HDMI 4 in our, in our macros, and it's not going to work because you're not plugged into that input. So if that happens, if, you know, you, you, oops, you have to go back and make sure you put the correct command. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that when you go back, it's programmed correctly. So if you create all your layouts before you do this programming, you're not going to accidentally change something that's programmed to where it won't work anymore. So it does it does make sense to do your layouts before your programming, especially if you're new to this. Um, you know, if you've been doing it a while, you can do either either or on the flight, or you can use functions to drag them the problem is this you know this layout is just it's not intuitive if you don't know what you're doing and you can see it's just they're all in a row so if you drag and drop you you have to play around with it to figure out where it is on the correct you know the correct page and the correct order so a lot of time I, I just see that new you know people that are new to programming these they like they like to use a simulation mode just because you can see exactly where everything is so do those pages before you do your programming and you'll be fine. So once you're done with all this programming, if you're still in this programming tab where you probably were, if you click download, it's going to ask you to save, which you can save. Here's just a bunch of my clients files. Save it and then it'll download to the remote. It takes a little time. I know this particular remote, the MX890, the port is underneath the battery cover. Um, depending on which model you have, it'll be in a different spot on the remote. Um, if you want, you can go to communications. You can click send to remote. It does the same thing as that download button. The get from remote is it pulls a file that's already programmed on a remote. So let's say you had um, a, a pro come in and install your setup and they programmed your remote and you kind of want to take over it or you want to see what's on the programming. You can plug in your remote. And then hit get from, it's going to upload the file. It'll ask you to create a file and everything. And um, that's it. That'll give you access to all the programming. It doesn't always show you. So if you go to database, it may not show you the models that are listed here when you use that method uploading. But it gets you in there and you can make changes that you want to make if you want to change a device. You know, let's say you, you went from an Apple TV to a Roku. So you could do that, you know, pretty easily. You'll, you'll see all... All this stuff will show, so it, it'll be minor changes, and you know if you if you get a good grasp of it, it's, it's not hard at all. So that's pretty much all there is to programming these. Uh, it may seem like a lot at first. Uh, it's not too bad if you know if you have some some programming knowledge or the logic within programming. It's, it's very easy. So if you have any questions on anything I've gone over, definitely. You know, leave a comment below and ask. I'll, I'll try to go over it. Um, if you have issues with your system, uh, again, leave a comment, maybe with an email address or something. I can I can contact you and maybe I can help you through some of the problems. I can take a look at your file and see if, if I can see anything that you've done incorrectly. And then um, that's pretty much it. So if you like the content, uh, definitely subscribe, like and subscribe. And, and let me know if you'd like me to cover some other stuff like uh, you can you can do the custom graphics, which aren't so intuitive on these remotes, um, not on this model, and not all of the remotes have that ability. Um, but there's some other more more um, in depth custom programming that can be done. But for the most part, this gets you through setting up your typical, you know, TV system or home theater system. Um, so look forward to hopefully speaking with you and seeing some of you guys in the future. Have a good one.